the channel hope you're all doing well out there massive day today we've got plenty to get done so i figured i'd just turn the camera on and take you off the ride there are a few things that i wanted to have a bit of a chat about today as well and the first one was facebook marketplace sales strategies ways to increase your sales i'm doing a few different things and i know it's q4 and the sales are going to be up but i'm trolling a few different things and the sales are going up so i figured i'd just talk to you about them anyway and um, maybe you guys can give them a try and see if they work on your side of things uh, the other one as well is negotiation tactics. Um, I really want to talk about ways to negotiate because I really do think not a lot of people are doing it and you're costing yourself some good profit. If you buy the item at a lower price and then you go to sell it, if you've negotiated an even lower price, you're going to make more profit at the end of the day, guys. So I'll talk to you about how I'm negotiating to lower that price down as much as I possibly can. Um, I also want to get back to the house. And I want to show you how the office is looking as well. Um, we've slowly evolved as we've bought more stock. So I just want to bring you what that update looks like now to hopefully just keep documenting it over the next 12 months as it grows more and more. And then I've also had a really big purchase just yesterday that got me very excited that I want to bring to you guys today as well. It'll be the reveal today. Um, so stick around at the end of the episode. I'll talk you through and show you uh, what that was that I bought yesterday that's really specifically going to help my Facebook marketplace furniture flipping. So really excited to bring you that. Um, let's kick things off with my overnight sales. Got to get out to the post office. Um, and then we'll go to a thrift store on the way back home as well. So there's so much to get done today. Uh, if you're into reselling by any means, guys, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Give the video a like as well. Uh, it's very, very much appreciated. Uh, let's get stuck into it. I'm gonna do the post, show you my overnight sales, and I will catch you at the post office. Console, two controllers. Thank you very much. Oh, that's amazing. Awesome. Thank you so no much. Enjoy. It's going to be amazing. Love it. Happy. See you later. Look good now. <laughs> no worries. See ya. So you would have seen there, guys, I managed to sell a PlayStation 1 console just while we we're in the process of doing up the post for today. So the lady's come around straight away. She's bought it for $100. It was a PlayStation 1 console, two controllers, uh, and it had two games as well. So for $100, she's got a pretty good deal there. I bought this on Saturday for $60, and I bought it as a three-game bundle pack. The game that I've taken out is Raystorm, and Raystorm on PlayStation 1, it actually comps for about $100. So not only have I made a $40 profit selling the PlayStation 1 console, sold to this lady today but if this race storm game goes for 100 it's going to turn into a 200 dollars sale and 140 dollars profit it really pays to split up your uh, bundle if you buy a big bundle like an xbox or like a playstation console pack split the games up and sell the games individually and you might make a few more dollars overall as opposed to just collectively reselling it as a bulk lot um, so it was really good and just as that was also happening I browsed through Facebook marketplace and I managed to see a Nintendo Wii console controllers cables sensor bar the works Available for $15 and here's the listing here. So $15 She's only just put it up. It's only been a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna change my plans a little bit I've just jumped in the car. I've obviously had that really good start with the PlayStation I'm now gonna go and get this Wii console uh, before we continue on with this day before we get to the post office before we get into the thrift store. So I'm going to whip around and grab it now and uh, I'll show you it once I've grabbed it. Hey, hey, hey. That's a noisy girl. Come on. Shh, shh. Come on. Hey, hey. 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 Okay guys, so I've been able to grab the Wii console and it's an awesome find for $15. There it is right there. She said it's in perfect working order, so we've got no troubles whatsoever. 
Um, and then I've got the sensor bar here too. I won't grab all the cables. I mean, there's the sensor bar. I won't grab all, oh, here's the controllers as well. So as you can see, it's literally everything you'd need and it was just $15. I haven't even done a comp check on eBay because I've bought it at such a low price, 15 bucks, there's gonna be money made. Guys, with Facebook Marketplace, I stress it a lot. You need to simply just go and grab it the minute you see it. If I said to this lady, I was gonna come around at five o'clock this afternoon to pick it up, somebody else would have come in at 25, 30, $35 and bought it from under me. So I really had to make sure that I went around and picked it up straight away to make sure that I could secure it for $15. It's just so crucial. And I know everyone's got really busy lives and you've gotta be here, there and everywhere. But if you can be in a position to scroll through Facebook, knowing that at any moment, you could just simply be going out to grab the item, I think that's the best way to go and browse Facebook Marketplace because the good deals don't last long and you've got to be super, super fast to make sure you get it once you've obviously secured it through Messenger. So awesome there, we bundle pack, happy days. I'm going to put that onto eBay for, I don't even know, I've got to check the comps, but could be upwards of $100. I've got some Wii games at home, so I might bundle it up and sell it as a bundled pack. Uh, but an investment of $15, wow we it's uh, not a bad start to the day. So. I've got to pick this up and I've also realized that we are right next to the salvos um, or one of the salvos that I was hoping to check out today. So I'm just going to hold off on going to the post. I'm going to jump into this salvos right now. Hopefully we can add to this wee bundle pack and find some more goodies to uh, throw on eBay today. But uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Happy days. Got the PlayStation done, got the wee bundled pack. Thrift stalls right here. Let's jump into it, see what we can find. VCA shirt, kept aside. It's a good one. It's an awesome shirt. Yeah. No, guys, I'm going to put it on a mannequin. Oh, really? But that's okay. It is allowed to be purchased. But it's mad. I don't even wear that. What about the one on the front? Oh, you're like, no. Oh, I love that one. Too. That's cool. They're both cool. Yeah. Both on mannequins. But yeah, that's the other thing. So I got this for I'll take a bite. Oh, stop it. <laughs> How can you not? No, you look so good on Fred over there. But that's okay. Yeah. I did find three pieces of clothing though, which I'm pretty happy about, more so because of the brands and also the style. There was a really nice style to them as well. This one was a Stussy. Now Stussy is a great brand to get your hands on. Even though it is a size small, I still thought I'd go with it because I just love the brand and I know that it sells very well. So this had a really nice pattern to it, kind of funky, very, very lightweight and a very much a relaxed fit. And coming into the summertime here, I think it's the perfect sort of item to buy. Um, I think this should easily go for about $25 on eBay and I've invested just six dollars into this one so a really really good buy there this one was one of my probably my favorite buy for sure um it was my one of my favorite brands rivka rvca um so i've been able to find rvca here in a medium but have a look at the pattern on it geez if this was an extra large i'd be keeping it for a saturday arvo that is just a lot of fun so i was able to find that as well right next to the stussy shirt and this again was another six dollars so rvca really cool pattern to that one the brand the style that's going to sell very very well um, and then the last one that i found as well was just a bit of retro vintage new zealand warriors rugby league um, so I found the Nike top. Now, I, I know that it's vintage one because it just looks very old school, but because of this here, it's the, I think it's DB Bitter. So it was an old sponsor of the New Zealand Warriors back in the 90s. Um, so I know this is a 90s polo and I was pretty happy to find it because I've just paid $5 and it is true authentic Nike as well. So you can see here, the Nike tick medium. I don't think this one's a fake. I think this one's just over 20 years old. One of the very first polos for the New Zealand Warriors when they came into the NRL, uh, the rugby league over in New Zealand and DB Bitter that's I know that's their initial first ever sponsor so awesome find there I'm thinking again another 25 30 bucks got to do my comps as always though so three pieces of clothing should have maybe grabbed the bike but thought I'd pass because I've already got a couple at home uh, not a bad stop let's get off to the post shop uh, post office and uh, and then I'll go through some Facebook and some negotiation hints tips and tricks let's do it
All right, guys, really productive day so far. Back at the house now, but I did just want to pause and have a quick chat about ways to increase your sales on Facebook Marketplace. And the first one I wanted to talk about was the use of Facebook Marketplace groups. It's something that I've placed a really large focus on lately, and it's certainly starting to pay off. I've had a number of sales through specific groups that I've targeted for the certain item that I'm trying to sell. Really good example of this would be, say for instance, this Nintendo Wii that I've just picked up off Marketplace. There's a group out there that are interested in Nintendo products of any kind, and they buy, swap, sell, trade, just simply even talk about it. They're just purely interested in it. You've got that target audience that you know is interested in the item that you're trying to sell. So why not put your listing into it and speak to those people directly? There's pretty much a group out there for any single item that you're trying to sell. Certainly brand names of clothing, there's a group out there generally in most cases. And it's a really easy search as well. So I'll put up here a little bit of a video of how you go about finding that group. And it's a very simple process. You just simply click on the groups icon down in the bottom uh, middle part of your screen on the phone. And then you click on discover. After that, you click on search and then you type into the search whatever you wanna look for. In this case, we'll go Xbox. So we're searching for anything relating to Xbox within Facebook Marketplace groups. Then we click on see all. Now this will bring up a full list of the Facebook Marketplace groups that we can join. And then once we've joined, we can put the listing for the item that we're trying to sell. So it's a very, very simple process. There's an easy search engine right there for you guys to search anything that you guys currently have that you wanna sell. If it's RM Williams, if it's Xbox, PlayStation, if it's literally anything, you can put a search in there for it and chances are there'll be a group that you can target for your listing. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't continue to list like you normally would through Facebook Marketplace as a generalized local listing. Certainly do that, but then cross list your listing within a certain Facebook Marketplace group that might be deemed obviously appropriate. You're just gonna target the right people doing it that way and it's gonna be a really, really quick way to increase your sales on Facebook Marketplace. The next one that I'm doing on Marketplace and I'm getting good results from, I think at least anyway, is I'm using the features in Messenger that I don't think too many people are utilizing and that is audio and visual through the camera. Now, you can actually use the, the camera service and capture your image in video format Everyone obviously takes their photos and puts listings up in photos. You can't do it on eBay, but on Facebook Marketplace, you do have that feature. So you may as well use it. I like to use the audio feature in Messenger. It's a simple button that you can click and then it turns into a microphone and you can talk into it and basically deliver a text message in voice. And that's a really great way to bring across your honesty and your genuineness towards the quality of the product. And there's really just a, it, it brings a person, a personality obviously to the, to the listing description and the messages that are being delivered. You're bringing your voice across and by doing that, you're gonna bring the confidence in the buyer to want to obviously buy your item. So I'm using both audio to speak about the item that I'm trying to sell for any questions that anyone might have. And I'm also using visual with the camera. I'm obviously, as you can see here, I'm scanning the items of furniture that I'm selling to really show that there are no damage whatsoever to it. And I'm opening up the drawers to show that the drawers are obviously seamless. Pretty much by having the camera and taking a full 360 degree view, you just again, you're providing that confidence and honesty for your buyer to know that it is a genuinely good product and they should be buying it. So those two features are features that I personally haven't seen anyone that I've tried to buy an item off that have used that service, but I've personally started to use it and it's been reciprocated pretty well on their end. They've been coming back to me saying, I really enjoyed the fact that you put the video up I obviously got to see the item. I had the confidence in it before I bought it. So I'm gonna to continue to use it. I wanna see if you guys, obviously you might be tentative about having the camera on you and delivering you know, a video of you talking. So that's why the audio feature's there. And then obviously turning the camera lens around and showing the product. You can even use the voice when you're showing the product and, um, and speak to it as well if, you, if you're confident enough to do so. Uh, but those two features just go a long way more to the text that you can often see when you're on Messenger. So do those two features, see if they work. They're certainly working for me. It just brings a personal touch to the conversation and the close of the ultimate sale. So the next one is one that I've been placing a real focus on and that is upselling. So basically trying to get somebody to come to the house and buy one item off me and turning it into them buying two or three items off me. And how I'm doing that is basically just trying to align it to what they are potentially interested in. So that coming to me for a pair of shoes and they're a US size eight, I'll go and grab another couple of pairs of my US size eights and bring it out to them and say, look, I've also got these as well. Would you like to grab them for the same price? 
and I've generated more sales doing it that way. The other thing as well is I'm also basing it off the brand. If somebody's coming to me for a certain brand, say for instance, Tommy Hilfiger, I'm bringing out all my other Tommy Hilfiger clothing items and showing them and saying, well, if you like Tommy Hilfiger, I've got all of these as well. It just has come away with a number of extra sales for me. And I've even started to make my listings brand orientated. So a Tommy Hilfiger listing, for instance. So I'm taking all of my clothing items, you know, for Tommy Hilfiger, jeans, shorts, polos, all of it, and I'm putting it in one photo and listing it as Tommy Hilfiger clothing, come and view, take whatever you like. So it's really playing on those that are interested in that brand. And you can do it for pretty much anything. If you're a part-time or a full-time reseller, chances are you've got quite a number of items of the same brand. So by putting that listing up on Facebook Marketplace, you're targeting that person that's interested in that brand. Um, you can obviously put that, that listing onto the, the Facebook Marketplace groups as well. That's another great way to go about it, cross-list it into a group, uh, but just target those that are after that sort of brand make. Um, that's been a really big one for me. Um, so basically brand labeling listings and then also trying to upsell wherever possible. So trying to get that one buyer buying that one item to take away a few items off you. It's just obviously gonna balloon your sales, save you the amount of time, it's a whole lot of heap of time. Um, it's been working for me. And the other one as well is offering delivery. Now, I've been offering delivery on pretty much any single item and I wouldn't look at it like it's the size of the item and hence why it needs to be delivered. I would look at it on the time aspect. You're offering the service of basically saving them time. People are lazy. People don't wanna to come to your house to pick up a T-shirt that costs $20. They don't look at that as a major priority as much as they might want the T-shirt. They just simply don't have the time to get there. So what I've been doing is I've now been saying on all of my listings, I'm able to come out and deliver the item to you for a small price. Now for me, that's really about 10 to $20, depending on the distance that I've got to travel. It might be something as small as a T-shirt, but I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna deliver it to you for a fee because of the time that it's gonna take me to do it. Not so, so 10 to $20, if it's gonna take me a round trip of 30 minutes, I look at that as a pretty good, you know, worth your while type trip. I know there's gonna be some petrol charges involved there, but I still think it guarantees the sale initially. So whatever that initial profit margin is, it's obviously worth your while going and delivering it to guarantee the sale, but then taking the extra 10 to $20, it might even be the petrol cost, but you've guaranteed yourself the sale. And if you're a part-time, full-time reseller, maybe even dedicate your weekends to being a delivery service optional. So on the weekends, I can deliver to you for an extra 10 to $20, or between five and seven, I can deliver your item to you as well. Whatever the case may be, offering delivery wherever you possibly can to your local area for a small fee is gonna get you more sales and it's also gonna put more money in your pocket because you're gonna ask for that small fee on top. So I've blanketed out for literally every single item. I can deliver it to you. It's gonna cost average of about $10 for delivery, depending on your location. If I'm traveling for more than, I really wouldn't travel actually for more than 30 minutes. So if it's a 30 minute drive somewhere, that's my max. Um, I'll put it on Google Maps and I'll have a look. And as soon as it goes over 30 minutes, I won't bother doing it because that's a one hour turnaround. And if I'm only getting $20 for one hour, that's sort of my maximum. I wouldn't wanna to do too much more of a drive because it wouldn't be really worth my time. Um, time is so, so important. So that would be my other tip. Offer delivery on everything. And even if you put it into your description, people don't read descriptions. So put it into uh, your messages when you're speaking to people. Put it in your audio. When you're using the audio feature on Facebook Marketplace Messenger, tell them. And I can also deliver it to you for $10. And you know, see how you go. Because I think it'll generate more sales. Because if somebody said to me, I can deliver it to you on Facebook Marketplace, that would be a bit different because that's not the way it works. You have to go to them if you're wanting to buy an item. And if it's flipped the other way, it's gonna be a great service that you can provide that person and they're generally gonna say yes. Well, like I said, I wanted to also give you a bit of an office tour today as well. So just basically show you how things have changed slightly since the last time I did one of these updates. I'm gonna spin the camera around and I'll just show you sort of a bit of a scan through the workspace that I've got outside in sort of the balcony area of my bedroom and also within the spare bedroom in here. Uh, with the new office space. So I'll flip the camera around and we'll go for a bit of a tour. All right, so I've got the desk um, still set up right there. I bought a new monitor as well, which has been really great because I was just working off that small monitor screen. So to get the new big guy in was an awesome win. Um, I've still got everything set up here, the trestle table, everything in storage sort of underneath now as well. Um, but really the top table just here, this is for anything that I still need to list. Um, so as you can see, I've done a pretty good job so far by listing most of the stuff that I've bought. This was obviously just bought today. Um, so I've just placed it here um, to be listed. I'll probably get onto that tomorrow. Um, and then really it's just these items here that I still need to list. I got these Ninja Turtles just the other day. How cool are they? 
Um, got those at a car boot sale on Sunday. A um, bunch of Matchbox cars as well. A couple of pieces of clothing. I've got to try and get a stain off those, so that'll take a little while. And I bought two pairs of shoes as well for five bucks each. So anyway, they are my clothes that I've still got a list. Um, there's a couple of clothes here that I've got to still sort of sift through. Um, I've got this new clothing rack, so I've started to put a few clothes there because I'm really kind of the t-shirts. If you look in here, this is sort of a becoming a bit of a death pile. I've got all these clothes in there. These are all listed though, thank God. Um, so everything sort of in there is all the bits and pieces. And then all my clothing is sort of lined up in here that I've got to... They are all listed, so it's just been really just a storing sort of thing for me. A lot of plush toys down there, a lot of board games and stuff in here as well. Great for Christmas, hopefully they sell soon. Um, but that's everything in here, and I guess the reason why I needed to sort of expand into the new or the, the other room uh, was because this was obviously becoming too crowded. That was pretty tight. That was pretty tight. So we're going to go into the other room, and I'll show you. All right, so this is just going through my bedroom at the moment. So out of my room, just here, we've got this little new workspace. So I'm spending a lot of time out here at the moment. Um, this is sort of where I spend my days. And as you can see, the tubs, the tubs have slowly been increasing. I think we're up to about 18 tubs now. Um, so there's a lot of shoes. So that's all shoes right there. That's shorts. So I've got a lot of men's and women's shorts and tights. Shorts and tights are in there as well. Over here, I've got a heap of hats. I do a lot of hat sales. And then here is a bunch of electronics as well. Um, it is all weather protected as well. So there's no sort of rain that gets in or anything like that. But these tubs are obviously really sealed up as well. So there's nothing that's gonna get inside. Um, this, the tubs actually only cost $6 from Bunnings. So an easy win there. So I've got that. I bought some trestle tables as well off Facebook Marketplace. They were just $20. They are $60 at Bunnings, but Jump on Facebook Marketplace if you need a trestle table because you'll always pick them up cheap. And this is now where I'm doing my photos. Um, so this is my new listing space. I've got the natural light of the sun that I'm utilizing to capture the photo. And these are coming up as a pretty clear image. I'm just enjoying the way that's coming up at the moment on my eBay store. So I bring a few items out each day that I need to list. And then I sit down here and I list away there taking photos. And then I either put them into the tubs to finish off or I take them back inside into the other room and, uh, and put them away. So really, if it's out here, if it's there, it's still to be listed. And once it's done, it's all put away. So it's a pretty seamless process, but by certainly having this space out here, it's allowed me to have more room and flexibility to grow. I can put tubs up right the way up to the roof. There's still room here to go all the way up. And then even along here as well, I'm tempted to get a heap more stuff as well. So there's just quite a large workspace to work out of here. And uh, I really do think for the next few months at least, I can have this as my sort of storage shed um, while I get a heap more inventory. So slowly building, I certainly couldn't have had all of that in the other room. So that's why it's all had to come out and be utilized here. And I'm very fortunate just simply out of my own bedroom, I can have my workspace right here and get the job done. So listing, outside, natural light, that's all you need. You don't need any bells and whistles. This literally gets it done. Um, I can set the camera up there and just take some really good photos and the natural light just makes it pop. So that's everything from a workspace scenario that I thought I'd update you on. The other thing that I want to have a chat about as well is negotiating. I really do think that anyone in reselling needs to be good at negotiating or at least confident enough to ask the question. If you're not asking the question, you're leaving money on the table because it is the fastest way to putting dollars in your pocket. Whether I'm at garage sales, whether I'm at op shops, whether I'm at flea markets, I'm always asking the person about the item that I'm trying to buy to see if I can get it for a few dollars less than what they're asking. If they say no, they say no, but I walk away with the confidence of knowing that I've at least asked the question and that was the absolute lowest point that I could get it to, whether it's the full price that they were asking or less. So a few tactics for this, a few easy ways to go about it if you are unsure or tentative about asking for a lower price would be to ask them the question, what's your best price? Rather than going in and you giving a price, I think it's a much easier way of going about things by just simply asking the question, 
what would be your best price on this item? If it's a $20 item, you asking what the best price might be, it might be a $15 that they offer you. You can then obviously say yes, or you could even come in at a lower point. Personally for me, because I am confident to do that, I would then say in that scenario, would you take 10? Now, what we're doing there is we're getting them down to a new price that they're willing to commit to, and then you're bringing in your price of negotiation to even lower than that. Now I found success in that, especially at garage sales. There was only a scenario on the weekend where I bought two bikes and she was wanting $30 and then she said 25. And then the minute she said 25, I said, would you take 20? And she said, yes. Now, if she says no, you've still got it down to $25 by asking the question, what would be your lowest price? But then you further that negotiation in your favor by bringing in a second lower point and then seeing if you can get a yes from that. So it's basically, you've got two shots at getting the lowest price possible. And for me, I've often found that whenever I even go again with a lower price, like the $20 for the bikes, a lot of the times in these scenarios of flea markets, garage sales and op shops, people often say yes. But if they say no, you've still got them at their lowest possible price. The next tip is silence. It's a really crucial step. As soon as they give you their best price, it's really, really great to just be silent about it. Take it in, don't give a yes or no answer. And maybe if possible, even do another round of the garage sale or the car boot, wherever you are. Just take your time to have a bit of a think about it. Even if you're excited by what they're saying and you're happy to go ahead with it, just take a little bit of time and then always come back to them with a counter offer. That way you'll know absolutely what their lowest price was. And if it's a counter offer that they've come to you with that you're happy with, obviously after a bit of silence, you can always come back and say yes. But I'm always calm, slow, take my time. I never jump at anything they say. And I think that goes a long way to making sure I'm getting my best price. The other tip that I've got is adding extra items into the equation after the fact. Say you're looking to grab these three t-shirts for $10 and she's not budging from 15. Well, I would say, okay, no worries at all. Can I grab a fourth t-shirt and make it 15? Obviously by buying more, she's gonna be more happy to sell at a lower price. And by getting that $15 amount, you're also now picking up an extra item. So when you divide it out, your cost per item is gonna be a whole lot less than if you'd bought those three items, obviously for $15, you're now getting four items for $15. So it's not ultimately always a money or a numbers game in that regard. You can use other items to benefit and be in your favor as well. So going from three items for 15 to four items for 15 and using the clothing item as a negotiation point is another great way to lower your cost per unit and ultimately get more stock to sell. But at the end of the day, guys, you've just got to grow that confidence to negotiate and just actually make a start. Just actually just have the conversation with someone to say, what is your best price? And then once they have given you that best price, go again. Just say, okay, would you do it for even less? If they say no, they say no, guys. At the end of the day, no isn't going to hurt anybody. It's just a word. So make sure you're negotiating. I just wanted to put this into the video because it's just something that I keep thinking about and keep talking to a lot of people about. People are buying their items and they could be buying them for a whole lot less just by simply asking the question. I just don't think enough people are doing it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on negotiating. Is it something you find easy? You can do it okay? Do you find it difficult? Uh, is it difficult and hard to do, I guess? Um, let me know because it'd be great to get the conversation started. And if you've got a good strategy for negotiating as well, put it in the comments too, because we're always learning. Um, I'm personally learning as much as I love to negotiate and I can see the, the benefit in it. Uh, it'd be great to know other sort of negotiating tactics as well. So uh, put it in the comments. Um, that was it for that, for the negotiating side of things. I did want to unveil the uh, new purchase that I've made as well. So to end the day, to end the episode, I'm going to show you what I bought yesterday. That is going to change the game. It's uh, certainly going to help my furniture flipping. So I'll, uh, I'll grab the camera, we'll take it downstairs and I'll show you what I bought yesterday. So like I said guys, this is really going to help my Facebook marketplace furniture flipping and it is a van. I bought a new van. So I'm really wrapped to get this guy. He's going to really serve the purpose uh, for what I'm trying to do moving forward. Um, grab him off Facebook Marketplace actually. Um, obviously the best place to get the best price and um, I did get a pretty good price for it. So a lot of negotiation went into this one um, but managed to get a pretty good price at the end of the day. And look at all the boot space or storage space really. There's no boot on this guy. Um, managed to get that trolley as well thrown in and the straps. So it's just an awesome get. It's sort of the car that I was looking for or the van that I was looking for. It's to really move away from just the sedans or the SUVs and get something a little bit bigger that's going to serve the purpose of getting more and more furniture uh, put into it. 
So yeah, I haven't named it yet. Um, would love your suggestions in the comments. Uh, let me know, it's a Hyundai i30 and it's white. So let your imagination go wild, put a heap of comments uh, into the comments section and I'll pick the best one out of there and name it, whatever you guys think it should be named. Um, so that's it, I thought I'd uh, just let you know that I'm, I've got the new wheels and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So I thought I'd just show you that one as well today, but that's pretty much everything guys. Huge day, um, got a heap of item li items listed um, before I even turn the camera on today. And uh, then we got out to the post office, the thrift stores, we sold a few things on Marketplace, bought a few things on Marketplace. Um, and then we got back and a few hints, tips and tricks, an office tour. And then the unveil of or the unveil of the new car. So big day, awesome to have you along for the ride today. It's gonna to be a trip to the thrift next Thursday. So hopefully you can join me for that. But um, thanks very much for tuning into this video as always and look forward to catching you in the next. Thanks guys.